And welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for August of 2023. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas, and I'm in San Francisco, California. Let's take a look at what's happening this month for you. Well, Aquarius, Juno starts the month in your sixth house. And Juno is an asteroid goddess that has to do with relationships and partnerships of all kinds. She's also quite the social maven and the networker. She likes to connect people that she feels belong together. And she's really good at managing people. And that's a really great use of Juno as she's traveling through your sixth house. If there are, uh, if there are people that you need to hire or people that you habitually manage at work, uh, this is a really good month for forming better, more bonded, more emotionally warm and connecting relationships to those people and, uh, and giving them some motivation other than a paycheck, you know, to want to do good work for you. Um, this is also a house of creating order and it's a house of health. And, you know, being the goddess of committed relationships suggests very much that bringing those themes into your partnership, if you're married, for example, uh, would be a really good idea and partnering up, teaming up with your partner to make your home life together better organized or to get more clarity around what are the routines that you share that help both of you live a healthy lifestyle together and how can you be a team about that. Really great use of this transit. Juno is going to move on into Leo mid-month. That means uh, going over into your seventh house. Now, Juno loves to be in this house because it really reinforces her native themes of partnership and relationship. And she loves to um, experience relationships in an equitable way, in a way that's fair and balanced and harmonious. And so this is a really great transit for uh, talking about the relationship itself. Um, and so sitting down with your partner and um, asking whether things feel fair in general and making sure that your partner feels seen and feels heard and just doing any negotiations that you may need to be doing right now in your relationship. And Juno is going to continue through this house until mid-October, so plenty of time to do all the negotiations that you might need to do. Now, uh, I also want to talk about Uranus. Uranus is traveling along through Taurus, which means your fourth house and this is the house of home and family, domestic life, heritage, and roots. And Uranus tends to stir things up. Uranus is quite the rebel and likes to introduce change. So you may find yourself uh, feeling pulled to behave in ways that are rebellious or reactive. It may be time to kind of bust out of your family, especially if you feel like it's been just too, a little too claustrophobic, a little too cloying a little bit overbearing and you really need to kind of break out of the family circle a little bit and find your own way a bit more this is a transit that might trigger um, you to want to do that and especially now Uranus moves really slowly and so it's been in the fourth house for some years already it'll spend a total of seven years here and it's mostly through that but with just a couple of years to go and um, every year it turns retrograde. This year it's doing that on the 28th. And there you see the little red RX symbol right there that says that Uranus goes retrograde. And that usually feels pretty pivotal. It feels like, you know, if you've been itching to kind of bust out, you know, if you've been bursting your seams uh, in your home life and feeling like you just want to disrupt things uh, and make a change, then the 28th, the 29th could be when you, um, you know, when the itch just becomes too much. So try not to, 
you know, um, root burn the plant that you are too much and, uh, and, um, you know, pull up roots too quickly, but, um, but this could introduce, you know, maybe even a new concept of what family is and, and home is and what these things mean to you. So that's a journey that may go on pretty much through the rest of the year as Uranus continues retrograde. Now, Ceres is traveling along through Libra in your ninth house, and she's been here for uh, several months already in and out of this ninth house, so I'm not going to belabor it too much, um, <clears throat> except to say that Ceres does love this house, and there is nothing like Ceres in the ninth house for deliberately expanding on and shifting your beliefs about money and about worth, value, and deserving and expanding on your sense of your own value so that you can ask for more um, in your workplace. So this is a great transit for that. Ceres will be in, uh, in this house for the rest of the month and until mid-September. And so this is a really good time to, um, to work on your own um, abundance manifestation. Hey, Julia, what's up with Venus, Mercury, and Mars for the Aquarians out there? Hey there, Aquarius. Let's start with Venus because she starts the month retrograde. This only happens about once every two years, so it's pretty significant. And for you, Aquarius, this is going on in your seventh house of relationships. So Venus retrogrades are times of review in our lives. And the seventh house is a relationship house. So this is really, really going to make relationships a very big focus of yours this summer. If you're currently in a relationship, then you can just be thinking about the relationship in of itself. Are you guys harmonious together? How do you guys work together as a team? Are you good partners together? You could also be reviewing other partnerships in your life, like a business partner. Are you guys working well together? together? Would you want a different business partner at one point, or would you prefer to work on your own? Um, you could also be reviewing some of the relationships you have with your contractors. If you see a lawyer or doctor or therapist regularly, these could be other areas of review. And if you're single, then you could also be running into a lot of exes right now. I mean, that actually goes for both the single and the attached Aquarians. Um, and if you are single, um, you know, you could be finding, you know, people People that are interesting to date with Venus in the seventh house, but since she is retrograde, I would hold off from making any major commitments. In fact, you might even start dating somebody that you used to date before <laughs> with Venus mm -hmm. retrograde in the seventh. Now, on August 13th, Venus directly conjoins the sun while retrograde. We call that Relationship Clarity Day. So you're going to get a little more insight into this stuff, into all of this reviewing you've been doing lately. So really keep track of some of the ideas you get mid-month because they might help you to move forward during this Venus retrograde cycle. Now, Mercury is also going to go retrograde this month, but on the 23rd. And before then, Mercury starts in your eighth house. Now, ever we have Mercury is where we're very preoccupied because it does rule our mind after all. And the eighth house is a financial house. It sh it's the, ho the finances you share with other people. So it rules joint credit cards, investments, um, inheritances, cryptocurrency, loans, mortgages, things of that nature. And with Mercury in this house, you could be thinking a lot about your investments, your shared finances. Maybe you're thinking about getting a loan from a bank, for example. Now, since Mercury is going to go retrograde later this month, you know, just keep bear in mind that there might be a lot of miscommunications over money. Maybe you're having miscommunications with your bank or your financial planner at this time, too. Now, this can be a very good time for research, but since Mercury is also going retrograde, you might be going back over some of the conclusions you've drawn during your research and investigation, whether that's into your money or whether that's professional investigation and research or even doing it at school. Now, Mars, the planet of action and activity, starts the month in your eighth house. So a lot of eighth house stuff for you this month, Aquarius. Um, and with Mars in the eighth, you could be very driven by money, wanting to increase your money in some way. Maybe you're feeling a little impulsive uh, with credit, for example, with Mars in the eighth house. Be careful of buying things on credit during this time because you might be too impulsive or even opening up too many credit cards where later you're like, oh, this is a little too much for me. 
Um, and you end up actually, you know, dinging your credit a little bit. So don't be so impulsive about money decisions with Mars in the eighth. Take a breather. Um, this can also be a little bit of a frustrating time if you're trying to remortgage or you're trying to get a loan. However, it's a good time for doing a lot of research into money, being very driven to learn how to um, increase your money in some way. Um, because the eighth house is also a research house too. So Mars might really help out with that. And there can also be disagreements with money, especially with Mercury retrograde here and Mars here. Um, so be ready to have to be patient when you discuss money with other people or even your bank. Now, by August 27th, Mars enters your ninth house. This is a house of travel, education. Um, it also rules legal affairs. Now, travel might get a little hairy by the end of the month for you, Aquarius, because Mercury is retrograde, and that is a travel planet, plus Mars is in your ninth house. So travel can be very frustrating. It can really get on your nerves. You might run into things that really frustrate you if you're flying anywhere or driving anywhere. Um, Mars in the ninth house can mean that you're very driven by adventure. It's a great time to go on an adventure and expand your horizons, especially if you're doing something physical, like maybe going on a new hiking trail, or maybe you're trying uh, something else like, you know, rock climbing for the first time. Um, you know, great time for having new adventures. Um, you could also get kind of stir crazy if you can't have any adventures now and just kind of want to get out there and, and, and just sort of broaden your horizons in some way, but maybe you've got responsibilities with your kid or your job holding you back. And that can be a little bit frustrating. Um, so the last thing I'll say about Mars in the ninth, this is a house of belief and opinions. And Mars can sometimes uh, in the ninth house mean having fights over opinions and your beliefs too. Mm, yeah, sure can. Hi, Jamie here. Horoscopes and moon videos are fun, but they're also really general. Did you know we run live workshops monthly and that you can get questions answered about your own chart there? This month's topic is how to get passion and commitment in one blissful package. In this workshop, you'll discover your two different types for love and for marriage and how to resolve them in a single passionate and committed relationship. If you haven't found lifelong love yet, you might want to consider attending this. This workshop is expressly for our tier two Patreon subscribers. It's easy to sign up at the Patreon link in the description below. I'd love to see you there. Now let's get back to the video. Well, I want to tell you about three moons happening this month, beginning right away on August 1st with a full moon in Aquarius, which naturally lands in your first house. Now, when the moon is full in your first house, you might find that the emotions that are running high in general are really feeling being felt very personally by yourself. You may feel that you have more emotions than usual. Aquarius, you know, uh, despite having aqua in it, is not a water sign. It's an air sign. And so it's very cerebral. And so, you know, emotional times are not always that comfortable for you. And you'd probably like to solve all the emotions that come up like a puzzle uh, rather than just letting them flow through you and feeling them, which would probably be a better approach. Now, we're calling this one Big Egos Disrupt Group Nourishment. And uh, I would say the group nourishment is represented by the moon in Aquarius in a really lovely trine with Ceres, so that groups can really uh, be filled up and, um, and there can be a wonderful kind of spreading out of nourishing attention over the group during a full moon in Aquarius. However, we have a square to Jupiter and this sun in Leo, both of which might be pulling for an individual to suck all the air out of the room and grab all the attention for themselves. And it might be a partner of yours. And uh, that can happen, especially with the sun landing here in your seventh house. So um, your, your approach would probably be to take a step back and, and become analytical, and that might just make this person who wants attention even more angry. So uh, it's a little bit dicey, but there is sufficient harmony in this moon to suggest that things are going to get um, uh, smoothed out and that any disharmony that happens during this moon would probably be pretty short-lived. 
then the next moon that I want to tell you about is the new moon happening on the 16th. <clears throat> and that is landing in Leo, which is your seventh house, your relationship house, where there's really a lot of activity this month. Lots going on here with Venus going retrograde here and Juno entering into here, as well as that new moon. Now, new moons are good times for planting seeds. And while this moon is happening, and also just the first two thirds of the month while the sun is passing through this house, is a really good time to put your attention on your relationships and um, and bring some nourishment there and to plant some seeds that will help their relationships to thrive in the future. Uh, possibly starting a new relationship under this moon, for example, um, or you know, planting seeds that will improve this relationship uh, over time if it's already been established. Now we're calling this moon mending rifts, not making them. Because there is some stress in this moon, there's a square to Uranus, and I talked about Uranus as, you know, providing something of a disruptive influence, but also some change and, um, and innovation in your home life. And that may come up as a theme under this new moon and as a, a theme in any discussions that you might be having with a partner. Um, now, this moon is loaded with harmony, and that square to Uranus is really just a small factor in it. So uh, this moon can really turn out well, uh, and you can end up, you know, mending rifts, not making them. And then the third moon I want to tell you about is a full moon in Pisces, happening on the 30th of the month. And this is the second full moon inside of a calendar month. And we call that a blue moon. It doesn't have any astrological significance. It's just a fun thing when it happens. Um, so this is a full moon uh, that lands right here in your second house, bringing up themes around money and finance. And uh, especially because this moon is in your second house, and that's really where the emphasis is, there's going to be a lot of emphasis on your own money and a pressure to establish boundaries around your own money. So that's what we're calling this moon is pressure to establish boundaries, which the moon in Pisces is not very good at, but Saturn brings the help. So with the moon landing in the second house, you may be having a lot of feelings about your own money and whether you want to put it into a common pot or not. Uh, whether you want to merge finances with a partner or change the way that your finances, your joint finances run, whether that is a spouse or a business partner, and the sun in Virgo would definitely be pulling for that. Um, but Saturn here is going to really push you to draw a line around your own finances and not leak it so much into a, a common pot. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the seasonal change. <clears throat> and early in the month, as I mentioned, lots of emphasis in the house of relationships. So a lot of your energy and attention will be there. However, when the sun moves on into your eighth house, the attention is going to shift a little bit to the deeper, more hidden and more intimate realm of the eighth house. Now, I like to think of this house as an alchemical cauldron of change. And whenever the sun arrives here, wherever the sun is, you want to put your high quality attention so that things can thrive and flourish. Now, the eighth house is a little bit like a basement in that it's, a, it's one of the hidden areas of the chart. And it's where things can kind of get a little bit moldy uh, or dusty just from sitting there without any sunlight for a while. So when the sun enters the eighth house, bringing the conscious light of your attention into realms that are usually less conscious, more unconscious, can really kind of clean those out and, um, and you know, kill off the mold uh, with the power of sunlight. So this is a really good time to put some high quality attention into uh, things that may be unconscious and buried within yourself or into intimate relationships that involve sharing of some kind, whether that sharing is uh, intimate sexual sharing 
or whether it is emotional sharing or financial sharing, this is a really good month for scrutinizing and looking into those connections and asking yourself if things are ship shape and things are as you want them to be. And so the sun will be moving along through your eighth house for about 30 days, starting August 23rd. And this is a really good time for that kind of research. Well, that's all for today. If you love Pandora Astrology's free and informative horoscopes, please do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share our horoscopes with your friends. You can find out so much more about how this month's transits affect you in very personal timing in our monthly Patreon workshops. Find the link in the description below to get started. Enjoy your summer, and until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.